Good. Let's begin. So hello everyone. My name is Dr. Richard. Welcome to the new patient orientation. So as you enter in, the video is being live recorded for that reason, your audio and video has been muted, but the chat rooms are still gonna be open. So I'm really gonna encourage you guys, if you guys have any questions to ask them throughout the talk and uh, we'll do our best. So we usually do these talks on the first Wednesday of the month and we usually do them in person, but due to COVID, we've had to move to this online platform. So this is our second time doing this, um, you know, uh, much prefer it in person, uh, but you know, for the times. Now, this talk is not long, it's roughly 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, there's gonna be a five minute question and answer time at the end. Now, if you have any questions during the talk, uh, please put it in the chat later. Uh, you know, we highly encourage all new patients to uh, attend this talk to better understand what chiropractic is and also how the adjustments that we're doing to them can make changes throughout their bodies. Now, tonight I'm gonna to introduce some new ideas that uh, may or may not, you know, you may have a paradigm shift on what you actually think about health and, you know, how it's being run. Um, and hopefully along the way you learn something. All right, so let's get right into it. There we go. So for tonight's agenda, we're gonna cover four main things. So first, we're gonna talk about the wellness journey. So it's what every patient goes through during the healing process to get out of pain. And all of you have uh, been through a report of findings, so you've definitely heard of this before, but definitely got to reiterate it. Uh, next, we're going to talk about what is chiropractic. So we want to talk about how it's defined and also what is, what is it that we do? What are we looking for, uh, particularly when we're scoping your spine? Uh, then we're going to talk about misalignments in your spine. We're going to talk about... Um, you know, what that can lead to and how it can uh, cause a decrease and ultimately function and not just result in, you know, your pain. Uh, and then finally, we're going to talk about what to expect while you're under care. So here's a quote from BJ Palmer. Okay, so he is known as the developer of chiropractic, and he was the son of D.D. Palmer, who was the founder of chiropractic. Uh, he played a major role in what chiropractic is today. Uh, in San Jose, there's the Palmer Chiropractic College. Um, so it's named after the Palmers. And what he said was, uh, medicine is the study of disease and what causes man to die. Chiropractic is the study of health and what causes man to live. So he really introduced a new way of thinking about what it means to truly be healthy. For example, if you are sick, right? By the time you get sick, your body has already failed to keep you safe. So he looked at what you can do to really prevent your body to get into that state. Uh, he also introduced the concept of adaptability and applied it to the body. Um, you know, your body is constantly having to adapt to its environment. And when it fails to do so, this is where chiropractic really shines. This is what we really look at. So let's talk about the wellness journey. So there's three phases uh, to healing overall. Every person goes through these three phases, right? The first phase is the restorative phase. And this is when you're in pain. Um, this is when you walk in through the door and we're seeing you for the first time. Um, phase two is the transitional phase. This is when you're getting out of pain. Now, this is when you begin treatment, you begin some sort of intervention. Um, this generally takes the longest period and it varies from person to person. That's why we have to build uh, treatment plans individually. Um, and then finally is the wellness phase. And this is staying out of pain. So and this prevents you from regressing back into pain. Now I'm gonna pose a question. I just want you to think about it in your heads. Which of these three phases do you think is the most important? I'll give you just a couple seconds. To think about that. Is it the restorative phase where you're in pain? the transitional phase where you're getting out of pain or the wellness phase where you're staying out of uh, pain. And for those of you who probably had the report of findings, you guys probably know that the third phase is the most important. It's the wellness phase. 
why. Uh, this is where your body is functioning optimally and you're out of pain. You have increased mobility. Your body is able to adapt to its environment, um, you know, to the best of its ability. Um, so it's important that when you're there that you do your best to stay there. You do that by getting regularly checked. Good. So done with wellness journey. We're going to move on to what is chiropractic? And for that, we're going to talk about the fever. We're going to talk about this because um, I think it's the most easily to look to. So um, what happens when you get a fever? So you get some kind of infection, whether that be viral or bacterial, and it enters your body and uh, it causes a variety of different symptoms. You have coughing, sneezing, runny nose, uh, watery eyes, uh, but it also causes you to have a fever. Now, I focus on the fever because this is different from the other symptoms. Now, the other symptoms, the coughing, the sneezing, right, the runny nose, the watery eyes, this is the virus or the bacteria. This is the infection. Now, the fever is a symptom that's actually your body's immune system responding to fighting off the infection. Now, when you get a fever, right, um, or you get an infection, your body naturally responds by raising its internal temperature to provide a poor environment for that infection to thrive. It essentially raises the temperature so hot that it kills it all. Now, I make this distinction because uh, when you get a fever, many times people say that, you know, you go to the doctor, right? Whatever that is, right? You go to the doctor. Um, and generally, when you're at the doctor, they'll prescribe some kind of medication. Now, uh, what does that medication do? So the medicine will uh, reduce all the symptoms, including the fever, uh, making it essentially harder for your body to fight off the virus or the bacteria. Now, when you think of it, you know, you're suppressing your own body's immune system with drugs. This is why you have some people who go two to three, maybe even four weeks of being and it's because you're constantly taking medication and not allowing your body's immune system to fight off the bacteria. Now, what does this have to do with chiropractic? And it's the immune response, okay? So the immune response is your body's ability to fight off any foreign invaders uh, and keep your body healthy. Now, when your body is unable to adapt to its environment appropriately, uh, this means that your immune system is not functioning well. Uh, and all the organs in your body uh, play a key role in keeping you healthy. So you have some organs in your body that are considered non-essential. So your gallbladder, your spleen. Um, you know, you can live without these through certain medical interventions, but, um, you know, only only when needed, right? Uh, then you have your essential organs, such as your heart, your liver, your lungs, you know, your brain, which you cannot live without. Now, collectively, you need these non-essential organs and these essential organs to really thrive. Now, what chiropractors do is they, they work directly on your nervous system, right? And this is the brain and the spinal cord uh, by adjusting certain segments of the spinal column uh, that have reduced nerve, uh, nerve interference. So what does that mean? And to really get into that, we need over a little bit of a basic anatomy. So the picture on the left, I'm going to put it in view. So the picture on the left shows what the ideal healthy spine looks like, right? There is a vertebra, and uh, these are your backbones, right? Which are separated with healthy discs and, you know, good curves in the spine. Now, each one of these bones, uh, you know, in between has a hole in here, okay? Now, this is really important right here, is this is where your nerve exits uh, the spinal cord. And it's shown here on the picture on the right. So in between each one of these holes, there's a nerve that exits. 
Okay. Now, inside of your spine lives the spinal cord, and uh, ultimately, it attaches to two things, muscles and organs in your body. Now, when you have misalignments in your spine, uh, it can put pressure on your nerves, and it can cut off the power. We call this, it causes some kind of interference. So chiropractors remove, they work on removing this interference so that your nerves can flow freely and provide good energy to your muscles and your organs overall, creating a, a, a better body function. So let's talk about misalignments in your spine. So here is a great animation of what it looks like when a bone becomes misaligned. So you have multiple things going on here, but you can see that as this bone, this vertebra becomes misaligned, there's a couple of things that happen. You have uh, this disc that's in between gets irritated, meaning there's some kind of unwanted pressure in this area um, and can cause some pain and some problems. It can also cause this disc to protrude or herniate, um, you know, given the correct amount of stresses. Also, the other thing is we're going back to that hole that we talked about in the corner where the nerve exits. As it gets misaligned, this hole gets smaller and smaller. It can actually compress on the nerve and ultimately lead to some kind of interference in that nerve, uh, providing electricity to your body. Great. Now, when you have these misalignments we talked about, there's multiple things that can happen. So you have your disc can swell, you can have some kind of nerve interference, you can have your uh, the joint between the two bones become inflamed. And lastly, there's muscle that also, uh, muscle and ligaments that connect the bones together to really hold them stable. Now, these muscles can tighten the response to this nerve interference as well. You know, it's, it's your body's mechanism of protecting itself. Great. So this chart right here is your autonomic nervous system. So autonomic nervous system just means things that in your things in your body that are automated, that work automatically. You don't have to think about it, right? So such as your heart. You don't have to think about your heart beating. It just beats, right? It's automated. Same thing with breathing, um, bowel function, right? Moving, uh, you know, the parasitic movement throughout your bowel digesting food um you know so ultimately right this is your nervous system at work and you have these signals that are sent from your brain to your body and these are represented in the red dots and then you have these signals that are sent from the body to the brain which are in the blue dots so what happens when you have a misalignment in your spine and the answer to that is that connection will either be slowed or it will be completely disconnected. And what do you think that does to the organ that is attached to it? It uh, highly uh, affects its function. Uh, so if you notice, each one of these as we go down here relates to a certain segment. So your S1 areas could affect your, um, your kidneys, your bladder. Uh, if you move up to your L5, L4 region, this could, uh, you know, in your uh, abdomen, um, you know, if you move up up here, uh, you know, you could have headaches, uh, a variety of different, different issues. Okay. Now, here's just a really simple de uh, depiction of health versus physical health. So, um, on the left, we say this is when you're healthy. So. Help is possible when you have a clear nerve communication between your brain and the body. And that's represented by the safety pin being closed. Now, your body is best able to adapt to its environment uh, in this state. And you know the tissue cells within your body are able to function the way that they're designed to, uh, designed to function. And your brain can ultimately properly control and regulate your body. Now on the right side, this is when you're not healthy or we say ill health. 
and uh, this is represented by an unclasped safety pin. So uh, this represents, you know, a partial loss of nerve connection um, between the brain and the body. Uh, you have some kind of imper uh, impaired nerve messaging um, that are affecting both the incoming and outgoing messaging systems. Um, you know, that blue and the red dots. Um, and this is essentially when your spine is misaligned. So when we are adjusting you, we are, uh, you know, attempting to reconnect uh, this, this pathway. Now, what causes misalignments in your spine? So there's three things in chiropractic that we say, and that's thoughts, traumas, and toxins. Uh, so we're gonna go through what exactly that means. So thoughts, thoughts being stress, right? If you are stressed out, yes, stress can cause you to be <laughs> misaligned your bones. Um, and on a very basic level, what that looks like is when your body's in a stress state, um, it can be in a sympathetic state, right? This fight or flight state. Um, you know, uh, this can be driven by anger. It can be, you know, uh, driven by emotion. But it, uh, essentially, your body is uh, very tense. It's very tight. Your muscles are protecting your body um, by tightening up and your muscles are bones and it can actually cause your spine to become misaligned uh, if your body's in a stressful state for too long. Um, there's traumas which people most likely uh, relate to, which is the major ones, the car accidents, the falls, the sports injuries. Uh, what people don't take into, into account is, you know, something like even a minor fender bender or even a, a small uh, fall or, uh, you know, uh, something that people take for granted and think that's not too bad can actually cause a variety of different issues later down in life. They don't get it correct. Um, now we're going to talk about micro traumas. This is, you know, the number one thing is poor postural habits. Um, you know, during everyone's intake, I always ask, you know, like, uh, what does a normal day of work, uh, work look like? And uh, many times it's, you know, sitting at a computer desk for eight hours out of the day or uh, maybe it's very active. Maybe you're, you're moving, you're doing a repetitive motion. Uh, and if your bones are not, and your spine is not have the, does not have the proper curves, uh, you could be you know, wearing down one side versus the other. Um, you know, uh, it could be even as far as you know, a, you know, when someone becomes pregnant, they put, they're adding on a lot of weight to their abdomen, right? And sometimes that amount of stress when your bones are already in an improper place and then adding on that stress of that added weight can exacerbate, cause that pain to get much worse. Uh, and then finally, we'll talk about toxins. Um, there's a variety of different toxins, but you know, even something as simple as air pollution, but um, the most common one that we, we see is smoke, right? Smoking can cause your spine to be become So first of all, when you smoke, you know, it's affecting your lungs, right? Your blood that runs through your body goes to your heart. Your heart will push it to your lungs to get oxygenated, and then it'll push it back to the heart to get pushed throughout the rest of the body. Now, uh, if your blood is not able to oxygenate well, it's not able to uh, give your organs the, the proper, uh, you know, nutrients that it needs to, to really improve. Um, and generally, when we see uh, spines of people who have been smoking for a really long time, so, you know, bones also have blood supply to them. It's, you know, it's not just like a, like a skeleton, you know, there's, it's living tissue. And uh, so people tend to forget that, you know, bones also have a blood supply. And if that blood supply is compromised, um, you know, your bones and uh, your body just don't heal as well. So trying that out there. Okay, good. We're getting close to the end. Now, this is pretty much what to expect while you're here. So uh, the goal is, right, when you're under chiropractic care, uh, we're looking to see how your body responds to the event. Now, this is why we are constantly tracking and uh, testing, you know, your muscles and your nerves to see the changes that have been made. Right. The goal is to get your body to your body and your spine to become more stable um, enough so that we can go longer periods without 
people getting care and getting adjusted. Now, uh, this is what we refer to as your adjustments holding. So this is why we scan you with the nervous scope every time you come in, right? We're scanning you, we're seeing what areas have nerve inflammation, and then um, we're adjusting those areas. And then when you come back, we're checking those areas once again to see did your adjustment hold or not. One thing you'll notice is the more you get adjusted, the more that segment will hold. It's body uh, inverted. Now, your muscles also have muscle memory. So a lot of the times, you know, people get their first adjustments. Um, you know, it could, you know, we see, depending on when they see them next, uh, very quickly that bone will become misaligned just because it's the first time they got adjusted. Their muscles will quickly pull that bone out of misalignment into it. For x-rays, right, there may or may not be significant changes with your x-rays, but generally with the spine, um, you know, the spine that we work on generally has had a lot of traumas, a lot of misalignments um, years prior to seeking chiropractic care. Now, the goal is to first make sure that the spine is not getting any worse, but um, also that, you know, along the way that hopefully we see some improvement. Uh, you know, we look at the body as a whole, x-ray is just one part of it, um, your x-rays, your muscle scans, your nerve scans, um, you know, and how you're feeling, we always look at you as a whole. Now, uh, your muscle scans, the computerized muscle scans, the myovision, uh, you know, we do these on, you know, depending on where you're at, we try to do it, uh, you know, once per month, essentially. So, the muscle scans are great at tracking your transition phase. This is when you're getting out of pain, right? Um, and you'll see some sort of fluctuations, uh, you know, as you begin to get adjusted, but your muscles will begin to activate in areas uh, that haven't before. And, uh, and uh, you know, you may be tight in certain areas, you may be calm in certain areas, but overall, over the period of, you know, the treatment plan that you guys are under, um, we would like to see that your muscle and your whole nervous system calms down. The last one is to achieve the wellness phase, right? Uh, say you're coming in three times a week, um, you know, your body becomes more stable, we'll pop you to two times a week, um, you know, we'll continue to monitor you, see how you're doing there. Essentially, we'll drop you to one time a week, once every other week, once per month, and then, then you're on wellness phase, right? Uh, regular checkups to make sure that you're not uh, continuing to uh, regress back into, you know, how you came in. That's all I have for you guys today. Uh, if you guys have any questions, now's the time to ask them. Uh, I think we kept up with time, which is good. Uh, let me uh, open up my chat menu. And if you guys have any questions, please leave it there. I think that's that's it. I think uh, I don't see anyone who has any questions here, which is great. Um, you guys can always call in the office um, if you guys have any additional questions. Um, oh, we do have one question. Oh, will the scans and the x-rays continue uh, during the wellness checkups? So we do do, uh, so at the end of the 24, um, you know, three month period, at the end of three months, we take x-rays, right? Then you know, depending on your plan, you'll go into the wellness phase. Now, during the wellness phase, um, it's not necessary to take, we, we take x-rays. Um, you know, generally we've, you know, we've seen the changes that needed to be in your spine. If we need to take x-rays, we will, but most of the time, what we do is uh, we keep up with the myovision scan really important that um, over the period of time that you're under care that we continue to do the myovision scans and uh, uh, track that progress, right? It's a, you're, you're, although you're gonna be out of the transitional phase, um, you know, it's a really good indication of, you know, how stressed your body is and uh, getting you out of that state is important. Thank you for that question. All 
right. So we got a couple of questions, a couple more questions. So how myo, how are the myovision scans conducted? Um, so pretty much you come into the office, for those of you who have been here, you guys know this. Um, when you walk in, the uh, you'll, during the initial consultation process, we'll have you stand. Uh, and what we're doing essentially is we're testing your postural muscles to see how tight they are. So, you know, when someone walks in and they say, I have tight muscles, what the system does is they it quantifies that into a number and then it compares it to what the norm is. And um, there, you know, every single one of your postural muscles should have a certain amount of tension to it to keep your body upright. Um, you know, and some muscles just work are overworked because they're in an improper position. The uh, the nervous system is just overactivated and in a stress state. Um, so, and we do that uh, every month. And how it's pretty much uh, We have another question here. Uh, what other potential symptoms can you experience when a bone is misaligned? Okay, so um, depending on how it's misaligned, depending on if the uh, you know, if if the nerve is being compressed, you can have uh, sharp shooting pain, right? That can go down either your extremities or legs. You can have a pain tingling or numbness uh, in your fingers. Um, that is if the nerve is compressed. Um, in the location, so uh, say in the middle of your spine, in that area, you can have point tenderness. So that's when uh, either Dr. Wu or myself are going through your spine and we're finding areas that there's some kind of nerve interference, that area can be a little bit tender. Uh, generally, there's some sort of inflammation. Uh, so it's, you know, good to get those corrected. So we have another question. Is there a relationship between an ear infection and chiropractic medicine? Uh, that is a great question. Um, so chiro okay, so first of all, um, just throwing this out there, chiropractors, we don't necessarily practice what we call medicine, but under chiropractic treatments, right, there are uh, certain upper cervical areas, right, that the nerve goes to the ear. So, and I want to go back to the autonomic nervous system. Um, so, in, in this area, in this area here, there are some nerves that can go directly to the ear. Okay, now, um, as long as it, it kind of goes back to the, uh, the principle, right? If your nervous system is, there's no interference in your nervous system, the body is gonna be able to heal itself much better. Um, you know, if your organs are functioning, you know, better, then that's what we want to, that happens. So, um, you know, we see a lot of, you know, a lot of things with chiropractic. Uh, you know, we don't like to just focus on the pain, but as people get adjusted, they'll notice that, you know, maybe by their sixth visit, their 12th visit, whatever that may be for that particular person, they will have uh, a change in body function, meaning they're, they will have improved body function, they'll be able to move better, they will overall just be healthier. Um, I would, I would, that's how I would answer that question. Can't say that for sure chiropractic adjustments will, uh, you know, eat or cure ear infections. I can't say that. But, uh, you know, getting adjusted does free up your nervous system from any interference. And, uh, and as long as your body is functioning properly, your body heals properly. So, and, you know, uh, it's an infection, right? So this goes back to the immune response. Um, fighting off foreign invaders, uh, you know, that's where we're at. Thank you. That was actually a really good question. Thank you for that. All right. I'll give it another couple seconds, but all right. Great. Thank you. You guys were lovely. Um, this was an awesome time. Like I said, our next talk is going to be in two weeks. Um, it is going to be on carpal tunnel, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, carpal tunnel. It'll be at the same time. Uh, so we do those condition-specific talks on the third Wednesday of every month. Please join us there. Um, 
if you know anyone who has carpal tunnel, uh, you can really help with that. Right. I'm gonna go ahead and end the talk now.